Do you remember these charts they tried to scare you with on television or this chart where they said millions of people would have died and now probably about 100 to 240,000 people are gonna die even though we're in our houses? Well, it looks like they're already saying those are wrong. Key coronavirus model revised downward predicts 60,000 deaths in the US by August. Huge difference. Now that you know that, let's take a deep dive on some stuff I found very interesting regarding all of this stuff. I think you'll enjoy it as well. So this is NYU's Lang One Health clinical trial tests efficacy of common anti-malarial drug. They're doing a research study on chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine, the drug that President Trump talks about and many doctors have talked about as a possible cure or solution for coronavirus. In this study, they're going to have 2,000 adult volunteers recruiting people who lack the symptoms but have been in close contact with others who have a confirmed or pending diagnosis. That's the first red flag. We're going to put you around people who have confirmed COVID-19 or people who are pending. I think that's a big difference whether they have it or not for the study, but I'm no scientist. Second red flag, the trial participants will receive either hydroxychloroquine or a placebo pill, vitamin C, every day for two weeks. So what is a placebo pill or a placebo drug? A placebo is anything that seems to be real medical treatment but isn't. It could be a pill, a shot, or some other type of fake treatment. What all placebos have in common is they do not contain an active substance meant to affect health. That's why they use starch or sugar. You're not supposed to have something that's also a cure or could be a cure in the drug, but it's pretty well known that vitamin C is being used even in New York hospitals to treat patients. Yes, they're using high doses of vitamin C, absolutely, and the placebo is gonna be smaller, but that's not what a placebo is. You wouldn't use a little bit of hydroxychloroquine as a placebo drug. You would use something that isn't also a cure. I mean, this doesn't make sense. And then I scrolled down in the article and I see the $9.5 million study is being funded by the COVID-19 Therapeutics Accelerator, an initiative launched by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in partnership with Wellcome Trust and MasterCard. So the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation are studying a research into chloroquine. Why might this be an issue? I think it's quite the conflict of interest because Bill Gates is also funding factories and seven different coronavirus vaccines at the same time. And if you listen to him talk, take a sip of water every time he says vaccine seen and you'll probably have your thirst quenched in a minute and advance uh, the vaccine it's it, it is fair to say things won't go back to truly normal until we have a vaccine that we've gotten out to basically the entire world and so you know the best people at the foundation uh, who are all about uh, high volume vaccines you know are working with many manufacturers actually what we'll have to have is certificates of who's a recovered person, who's a vaccinated person, because you don't want people moving around the world where you'll have some countries. The whole world needs one, he said, everybody. So the same guy who obviously wants the vaccine is also funding the chloroquine treatment with a placebo pill of vitamin C, surrounding people by confirmed COVID people and people with pending results. Seems like a conflict of interest. Well, what other conflict of interest might there be? Right on the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation website, Global Health Leaders Launch Decade of Vaccine Collaboration, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, a global vaccine action plan, including the World Health Organization, our friends, UNICEF, the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. The Leadership Council is compromised of Dr. Margaret Chan, the former director of World Health Organization, Dr. Anthony S. Fauci, on Bill Gates's Leadership Council of his global vaccine plan. The more I looked, the more interesting stuff I found. Here's Bloomberg News trying to say countries with mandatory, mandatory tuberculosis vaccines have shown fewer coronavirus deaths. So they're pushing this narrative of how great mandatory vaccines for tuberculosis are. Ready for this one? Let's look at the top 10 pharmaceutical companies based on global vaccine revenues. The top one is GlaxoSmithKline. And wait for it. GlaxoSmithKline hands tuberculosis vaccine to the Gates Foundation's nonprofit biotech, January 27th, 2020. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So before we move on, clearly Dr. Anthony Fauci and Bill Gates want the vaccine to be the main solution. The ultimate, the ultimate solution to a virus that might keep coming back would be a vaccine.
understandably so. They've spent decades in this stuff. They're on boards. Bill Gates is just buying up pharmaceutical and vaccine companies left and right. He's funding billions of dollars into it. I don't know that he would want hydroxychloroquine to be a great solution if it turns out to be when he already has billions upon billions upon billions of dollars in multiple companies invested into vaccines being the solution. So that's why I pointed out the fact that the placebo and other things didn't quite make sense to me, but once again, I'm no scientist, let me know what you think. Now let's move on. The one thing you can't question is vaccines. They say, you know, it's settled science, you're a conspiracy theorist, which I'm not. Here's the Atlantic article, vaccines are profitable, so what? Yeah, big pharmacy is making money from immunizations, but that doesn't mean anyone should skip the shots. So everybody with common sense knows that money can corrupt any industry, whether it's sports, you've seen rigging, cheating, all of that stuff, every industry in the world. I mean, there's thousands of television shows about this stuff. Everybody knows that money can corrupt any industry, but not this one. You know, they're profitable, so what? I mean, how dare you even suggest that there could ever possibly be some sort of corruption at all involved? Yeah, okay, I'll just erase that from my brain like a men in black switch. You're right, you're right, Atlantic. Here's another one from Bill Gates. We feel there's been over a 20 to 1 return, yielding 200 billion over those 20 years or so, Gates told CNBC's Becky Quick on Squawk Box. Helping young children live, get the right nutrition, contribute to their countries, that has a payback that goes beyond any typical financial return. You could look in Wall Street Journal. He's once been invested in Merck, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson, who's working on the new vaccine. Gates Foundation buy stake in drug makers from 2002. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation purchased nine big pharmaceutical companies valued at nearly $205 million, and that was back then. You can do research on yourself, but I mean, the point is very obvious. I don't need to go on. Bill Gates, vaccines, pharmaceuticals, World Health Organization, this type of stuff. It's hard to look anywhere and find him not involved somehow. But why am I talking about this? I'm not trying to start some fake conspiracy theory or run people astray and make them feel confused. I'll explain exactly why. Well, you remember that chart from the beginning of the video that Dr. Burks was showing all over the stage? This was a model from the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. That was her chart. And all you have to do is go to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation website to find out They've boosted vital work of the University of Washington's Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation pledges $279 million for IHME to expand its work, highlighting UW's position as a global hub for improving population health worldwide. So Bill Gates also funds the University Institute, who made that chart that we now know is not right, or they're saying it was completely off by a long shot. And that was the chart used to scare the American people, used to scare Donald Trump into deciding to shut the economy down for another month or so, which has had devastating effects on the health of people. You want to talk about health, talk about not being able to go to work, go out, go to the gym. I mean, this has real life consequences. The economic effect, millions of people losing their job, millions of people losing their salary, and the government check still hasn't gotten to most, if not all people. So yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Well, what else is wrong? Andrew Cuomo is admitting... Early projections in orange and blue, you can see right there, showed we would need 55,000 to 110,000 hospital beds. The purple line shows where we are. We are tracking better than the initial models, which is good news. Social distancing appears to be working. We must keep it up. So you see what they do? They say, these, this is the line with no social distancing. This is the line with social distancing. But then it goes way lower than that line, and then they pretend like the reason was because of social distancing, even though they were completely wrong. The truth is, the models were never accurate. And that line in the Dr. Burke's model was if we social distance. They said, this is the millions of lives we'd lose without social distancing. This is the hundreds of thousands of lives we're going to lose even if we do this right. And when it goes under, they say, oh yeah, see, that's what we said. No, that's not what you said. I understand you can't get it completely accurate, but we see who's funding these operations. And as American citizens, we're allowed to speculate why. Bill Gates is a wildly successful guy, but it's not a secret that he's no fan of how Donald Trump wants to run the country, his theories, his policies, things like nationalism and countries moving inward, not trying to be dependent on China and this entire global structure. That's what Trump ran on. That's what he's all about. That's what the UK has been about recently. A lot of countries has. And Bill Gates has openly explained he doesn't like that. But in general, in that, that you have been a great beneficiary of globalization and you have been a great sponsor of it and a defender of it. Are you, are you worried about it at the moment? More, more than uh, I was five years ago, yeah. Uh, and it's not just the US. I mean, the UK is very interesting and 
you know, the, the turning inward, the, uh, you know, is it cyclical? Because you're always going to have populism come along. The elites, in some ways, will overplay their hand, uh, and you're going to cycle. Or uh, is it secular, and it's going to stay that way? Um, you know, I think all of us, you know, come to forums like this seeking insight into, okay, uh, you know, what, what will turn this around and let very tough problems like climate change uh, be done on a uh, global collaborative basis. Do you worry the ability of elites at the moment to persuade people that issues like climate change... It's gone down. Global, it's gone down. It's definitely gone down. And, and you know, whether you want to stop pandemics or, or solve climate change... So the UK and the US turning inward like Brexit and Donald Trump, him and the elites are trying to figure out why this is. Is it cyclical? Is it going to come back? How do we do it? What will turn this around? What will turn this around? So how convenient that he's funding all the models that destroy the economy, that keep people inside. He's funding both sides of the cure, whether it's hydroxychloroquine or the vaccine, which he's much, much more invested in on multiple different levels. He's funding the university that Dr. Burks uses as the gold standard of models showing us how many people are going to die, and they've recently been massively wrong. And his longtime work with Dr. Fauci, including many other stuff that I don't even have the time to bring up right now, leads most Americans to ask the question, who is Dr. Fauci more loyal to, Donald Trump in this administration? or Bill Gates and the World Health Organization. Donald Trump recently said he's going to freeze the funding to the World Health Organization since the United States funds them more than anyone else. In January, they said humans couldn't give coronavirus to other humans. In February, they were blasting Donald Trump, saying it's fear and stigma to do travel bans when he was ahead of them. And now they continuously blast him for not listening to them. We, we, at, at this point, we're reevaluating our, our funding with respect to the World Health Organization. Now, this is very consistent with what President Trump said since the beginning of his campaign. Organizations have to work. They have to deliver the outcomes for which they were intended. We take taxpayer money and give it to them uh, for the benefit of America. We need to make sure it's delivering on those taxpayer dollars. The World Health Organization is no different in that respect. We have, they have to execute on the mission that they are designed to achieve. And we've seen, with respect to the World Health Organization, here we are. We have, we have, it hasn't accomplished what it was intended to deliver. Please don't politicize this virus. It exploits the differences you have at the national level. If you want to be exploited, and if you want to have many more body bags, then you do it. If you don't want many more body bugs, then you refrain from politicizing it. It's like playing with fire. So more than ever before, national unity is important if we care about our people, if we care about our citizens. Please, unity at national level. No using COVID for political punch. And then second, honest solidarity at global level. And honest leadership from the US and China. We shouldn't waste time pointing fingers. We need time to unite. Who do these people think they are? I think I know exactly who they think they are. They think they are the global leaders of every country and that they can dictate health, economy, government, the flow of travel, and even the ability to tell you that you can't even leave your house. Even though you never elected them, you never voted for them, they don't lead your country at all, and in some cases, they don't even have a health degree. So, I'm all for worldwide solutions and loving everybody, but something much more nefarious seems afoot. And the more we do real research, show real data, real articles, real video clips like I've done, the more conversations we can have to get down to the core of what's happening, because tens of millions of people losing their job our economy getting massively, massively downsized and destroyed while Amazon hires new workers and just keeps growing with the richest person in modern history at the helm. This isn't capitalism. This is not a free America. And all these models that they're funding are completely biased from the get-go. So I think in this country, we've taken a very liberal approach to mortality. NBC New York. 
New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio says the city will begin counting coronavirus victims who weren't tested for the disease. That's my thoughts. Let me know yours. Have a beautiful day, and I'll be back with more videos.